Hey, what's up, guys? It's Josh, KI6NAZ. Battle Box got a hold of me. They are the survival and tactical gear delivered monthly kit boxes. They have four tiers that start at $29.95, and they go up to $150. They got a hold of me and said, hey, would you like to check out one of these boxes? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, I didn't know what to expect as far as ham radio-related gear. But things quickly got out of hand. I found some good things for amateur radio, and I made an antenna out of one of their survival items. So without further ado, let's check out the box. And if you are interested, the link will be in the description if you'd like to try out a subscription to BattleBox yourself. How's it going everybody? This is Josh KI6NAZ. I have a BattleBox.com monthly box. They contacted me and asked if I was interested in checking out their boxes and I said, sure, do you mind uh, what I do with what I find inside? And they said, no, not at all. So they sent this out to me. I'm told this is the Pro Plus box. Uh, this is the month of August, but uh, I don't know if that depends on what they ship to me or not. Basically, prices go from $29.99 up to $149.99, which that's what you're looking at here. So let's crack into it. Okay, so this is... Oh, okay. So the basic, which is $29.99... Um, is a value of $59.95 or $59.98. The Pro Plus, which I said is $199, is a value of $365.91. This is Mission 53, which is off the products that is paramount for uh oh. So this is Mission 53 Basics box. Mission 53, okay. The moment while out in the wild, it is a S-I-S-H-I-T kit from Potty Pack. Oh, okay. <laughs> so already I'm, I'm pretty enthralled with where we're going with this. So what do we get? Okay. So let's take a look at what we got. Uh, let's just go right off the top. Mantis knives. Here we go. Ooh. That's interesting. Doesn't have a doesn't have a thumb nick. Ah, uh, yes, it's a switch. There's actually a switch, uh, and it's a liner lock. So this is a you push down on this guy. I'll have to figure out a better way of doing that. Okay, <laughs> well, this is interesting. Ooh, <laughs> I promise this isn't a uh, standard capacity magazine. This would get me in trouble in California if it was. No, this is a survival kit, believe it or not. Um, although I think that is actually a 5.56 five, uh, standard, or uh, sorry, short capacity mag on the bottom. I'm sorry, on the top. And this is a survival kit on the bottom. And I believe... Okay, I'll figure that out in a second and come back to you. This is a field toilet wiper. There's also another one of these. So single-use potty packs. Line 9. This is a cool bag. I'm going to use this for something. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I am going to use this. This is a, a bowl, like a waterproof bowl of some kind. That's pretty cool, though. I could imagine actually uh, using this for a throw bag, having throw line in here. Uh, that's pretty handy, actually. Yeah, so you could take this and put your throw line in it with your throw weight. You'd have to use some pretty thin stuff um, or not take a lot of it, and then you can take it and fold it up. Although there doesn't have a lot of space in there. I'm going to have to try that out after. And then you zip it up closed. That's pretty cool. Bushcraft rope lighter. <gasps> oh, this is cool. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know how these work, actually. Um, I learned how this works from Cutlery Lover, believe it or not. Friend of the channel, Cutlery Lover. Yeah, I'll get back to this one, too. Let's come back to that in a second. That's cool, though. That's super cool. These are the old-style uh, lighters that they used to use in... Uh, the trenches and whatnot. Ooh, waterproof pouches. 
I can also use these. Very cool. Yeah, so these have all kinds of practical uses for amateur radio. <laughs> Waterproof anything, right? And these are roll top kinds. So you basically start out here, begin rolling. Right, you want to get your waterproof seal. Begin rolling and then seal them. And there you go. Then that makes a nice little uh, open from center. Do not pull the sides. That's good to know. Oh, yeah, that's pretty strong Velcro, too. Cool. All right. And then let's take a look. What is this? Oh, this is the multi tool. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, retainer clip slash multi tool. So that is the retaining clip. I've got to figure out how to open that. And then last, we have a knife from Gerber here. I've been known to carry a Gerber knife now and then. Oh, and it's a multi tool. Excellent. That's not so bad. Normally with the uh, the Leatherman type, if they don't round the edges here, you kind of squeeze your hand. You kind of, not pinch it, but the edges. Oh, there's a lot of grease on this though. And I'm assuming this locks. It does lock. Cool, okay. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that survival kit now that I know I'm supposed to move that. Well, I, I like it when YouTube videos uh, <laughs> basically, kind of tell you exactly what you're feeling is that this is kind of hard to open <laughs> um i'm i'm simply not doing it right you have to push in with your fingers both of them and then it, it slides off the front but my fingers don't go in far enough and i'm already pressing them to the max so um let me so at least i know how to do it i guess that's the the first trick is knowing how right so let's jam a screwdriver in like that and see if that helps. Yeah, that did. Okay, so once you wedge a screw, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I can see what's going on here now. They've got a uh, a little nip, a little lip here that once it goes over, it, it blocks the travel. So you just have to get past that uh, that first little bit, these metal pieces. So, And uh, apparently after looking at some of the videos, oh, look at that, it's a multi-tool. Some of the videos show that uh, the more you use it, the more, um, the more the metal gets loosened and it's a little more um, easy to move. So here's your, your survival kit. Look at that. It's in a plastic bag. This is a credit card survival tool. It's got a saw, a couple of sharp edges, cap lifter, a wrench, smaller wrench a pry bar of sorts and there's usually some kind of instructions in there yep that's what's in there uh, you got some boo-boo band-aids you got an alcohol wipe 70 percent a bubble compass which seems to be doing all right bubble compasses can be somewhat Problematic. This one's doing great though. Uh, ooh, the this is supposed to be a saw, which if you've ever used one of these before, they are very problematic. But hmm, let's come back to that. That is a tiny ferrocium rod and a bunch of uh, safety clips and one paper clip. Safety pins are are really useful, just in general. A small knife. You can trust me, it's a small knife. I'm not going to open that. A bit of fishing kit, which is nice. A couple of bobbers, a couple of weights, a couple of gate clips, a bunch of line, and two bait hooks that are snell tied. So, helpful. And some tinder. This is a cotton ball that's smashed up. And just a regular made in China bag. I'll just go ahead and take that. I'm assuming all of it's made in China, but uh, okay. So um, let's let's keep some of this stuff out because we're going to talk about how this is related to ham radio, right? And that's what's going to be the most interesting thing, or how you can use this potentially. Now the real test is: can I get it back in? Nah. Yep. 
It'll make your compass uh, line up with that thing. So this should go something like this to get back in. By the way, that's a cap lifter and a little screw and a flat blade. Okay, and bam. So that's, I mean, <laughs> logistically, if you were carrying a magazine and you had rounds in it, like if you're going hunting, you're going outdoors or whatever, that's not a, a, a bad layout for a safety kit, survival kit type of thing. Okay, so let's uh, let's lay everything out on the table sans, um, sans packaging and take a look. I pulled this out for a reason. You probably already know where I'm going with it. Okay, so walking around a bit, $29, $59, $99, and $159 adds more to your kit that you would have gotten. You would have gotten the rope lighter and the denim trail bowl plus the potty, <laughs> the potty kits. Um, if you added up, you would have gotten the Gerber multi-tool and the waterproof pouches. You would have gotten the magazine if you went to $99 value, and you would get the knife of the month which is the Mantis knife, um, if you had gone up from there. So just on a lark, I went and looked this up on eBay, um, or just on the internet. I wanted to see where I could, what I could buy and how much it went for. And it looks like the, it's only available on eBay. And yeah, it goes from like 160 bucks for this knife is, is what it's going for on eBay. So, you know, let that, I don't know what that'll tell you, but if you wanted to look that up, that is the Mantis knife. It's gearhead, black wash, and copper with draw point, or it's a draw point blade. Okay. So, um, again, what can we use in ham radio? Well, lighters are great. Multi-tools are obviously going to be great, so keep that. Uh, <laughs> if you're hiking, that's not bad at all. These are hopefully biodegradable. Oh, uh, toilet wipe, wet wipe, disposal bag, and a hand sanitizer. So, I guess they're not biodegradable. So, you got to pack out your your stuff which okay whatever um waterproof bags obviously ham radio related you could put your phone your tablet even your radio in fact um i'm not going to leave my kx2 in a bag like this or maybe i'll put it in one but you can easily fit a radio in there i could probably even fold this up and fit it back in its um its bag that i normally carry it in so yeah that that's still something you can do the waterproof bags are a good idea. But then I got to thinking, well, we've got this saw, quote unquote saw here. And what this is, is really aggressive wire. And I started thinking, you know, you could use this as a snare wire. A lot of people have talked about that. And it's not very long, but it is twisted and I see three strands of wires let me do a quick measurement really quick and see how long this is um, from a wire standpoint so just just measuring from the ends here that's about 22 inches of wire so 22 inches of wire If you were in a survival situation, you would be doing this with patience and serene faith that you would be able to use your radio to call for help, wouldn't you? Every time I've complained about uh, making a Cat5 cable, <laughs> never again, <laughs> never again. <laughs> This stuff is horrible. Oh my goodness, that took an appreciably long amount of time. So, um, four strands, which means I can twist two of the strands together and have two lengths of wire. And since I have no idea what we're gonna get, because I'm not gonna cut them, uh, I'm just going to check and see what they're resonant on. 
So in what took way too many adapters, I can't believe I don't have just a straight um, PL259 to, what is this, female? Yeah, female BNC, I don't know why I don't have that. But anyway, we've got a BNC breakout um, and I've made a dipole basically out of two strands of the saw wire. I have two more in case I need to lengthen it. But we're just gonna run this real quick against two meters and see what we've got. We're gonna stretch this out a little bit. Get this other stuff out of the way. Try to get these connected on non-metallic things. Um, but you know, we're gonna do our best. So hold on. We have something. Let's do a scan SWR. Zero. We're gonna go two meters. <laughs> It's two to one. Oh my God, that dip is pronounced. Oh my goodness, where's the dip at? One, four, six, nine, six, zero. So it's uh, too short. So if I added a bit of wire, um, we would get our sweet spot. And what's that sweet spot look like? Let's Let's center it right here. Look at that sweet spot. Wow, okay, so. We can actually we can actually dial this bad boy in pretty nicely and get a one to two match. Um, let me figure this out. I'll be right back. One point five to one SWR. Let's do it again. It's gonna move a little bit as I get closer to the metallic objects, but that's two to one. Um, let's. Uh, there we go. Five two zero, right in the middle, pretty much, uh, or one four six five two zero is the calling frequency. But right now we're on a dipole, and a dipole is going to only work with um, people that are also using dipoles and using something other than um, FM. Well, it'll work with FM too, but largely people that are using dipoles or horizontally polarized antennas. This will work with. So we just made an antenna uh, out of a survival saw, thanks to BattleBox. So. Hey, you never know what you're capable of doing if you needed to in an emergency situation, right?